What is up? This is John Nelson, and you are listening to the Starting Block Podcast. If you are looking for a show that's going to give you complete athletic development, it's going to cut through all the nonsense of social media and all the confusion and give you a real in-depth, uncut look into how to win as an athlete, a parent, and a coach, then you have found the right show. Now, if you are new to the show, welcome. Glad to have you. Here's a quick breakdown of how everything works. So we have three or four actually different types of episodes. The first episode is going to be the soup du jour, is what we call it, or uh, our, our ode to Dumb and Dumber there. And uh, that is going to be where Chris and I, uh, my co-hosts, get on. We discuss uh, a topic related to rehab, performance, um, you know, athletics, nutrition, anything like that, and we break that down. The second type of episode that we have is going to be a guest interview. Now, this is going to be your standard podcast, if you've ever heard of one, where we bring on colleagues of ours from across the country and, heck, actually across the world, and they share their stories of success and how they win. Um, the next type of episode is going to be um, just a random Q&A. So we take uh, questions from our audience, and uh, Chris and I and Mady will break those down as well. And for those of you guys that have submitted uh, questions to Q&A, we have a ton of them, and we will get to them. They will be released throughout the next couple months, um, but we are answering all those as quickly as we can. So keep sending those in. We appreciate it. And then the final type episode is going to be your Friday fire. And that's your Friday morning where most people say, I just get on and rant. But really and truly, I'm not really ranting as much as I'm just passionate. And uh, that's me just basically brain dumping on you and kind of letting you know my thoughts. And, hey, that may be uh, maybe political. It may be uh, winning. It may be just, hey, get your shit together and let's go. Um, and that's really the breakdown. And uh, so today, uh, we got a really special episode today. I'm pretty stoked about this one. Uh, today's going to be a guest interview. Um, and our, uh, our guest today is somebody that uh, I recently met a couple weeks ago. Um, all of you uh, ELPers, you guys are going to be familiar with it. Uh, this is the man responsible for uh, all the crushing workouts we've had the last few weeks. Um, and so today, we're going to introduce uh, Mr. Gary, and I call him Mr. Gary Goda. But Gary from Gota, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? Good, good. I'm glad to have you on. And um, I want to make sure I also bring on uh, our co-hosts, Chris and Mandy. So they're on here as well. What's, what's up? up? Welcome. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so we got the full crew here for you, Gary. Like, we're rolling out the red carpet for you. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, man, I'm excited to do it. it it's been a, a, a little bit since I did a podcast because um, i kind of been – sending ricky for all of that stuff you know yeah but um it's it's cool I, it, it's it's fun to do so i like yeah. it well man i i appreciate you coming on and um you know there i tell people and i tell people all the time that it's really been two things that have really shaped my career um you know we had jay schroeder on a couple of weeks ago jay was a big influence of mine and uh and a couple other people on that network who are, i'm gonna i'm not gonna use their names just yet because they're gonna be coming on kind of surprise guests but um, you know, that type of philosophy, but then Gota, man, Gota really, um, you know, it really changed the way we do things at ELP. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been in this industry 16 years now and, and, and Gota, you know, really influenced what we do. And I think Mandy, you know, I know you can you know, speak for him. Mean, we've, we've really changed a lot because of, of the work Gary and Ricky and them are doing down there. So I, mean, I just, from the bottom of my heart, man, I just appreciate it. Like you guys are really challenged Absolutely, us to get yeah. better. So, um, thank you. You. you know, and, and so I just want to keep the conversation flowing. I told you, like, bro, there's no script here. We don't, uh, we don't script this out. Like, I, I want it to be raw and authentic. And uh, I tell people, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, Gary, you absolutely kicked my ass down there. Like those workouts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, like, I think I text Mandy, and I'm like, f this, I'm done. Like, yeah. I, don't... <laughs> I, I tell everybody, it's like. You know, people get in the go to a little bit, whether it's a coach or, you know, athlete, general population, whoever it may be. And I'm like, you've done go to, or you might be doing some go to, but your first actual go to workout is when you step on the turf with us. And and it's just different, you know. And it, and it's it's always good because most people are trying it and, and they're going into somewhere else or they're doing it at home or a gym that may have a lot of other things going on. But this gym is completely go to nothing but go to there's no other stuff going on here so um being in that element i guess kind of changes it. it it's it's got a, a little bit of a pulse here so you kind of start yeah. to feel that and then 
it, it, it gets intense. We try to make it as intense as possible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew you were trying to kill us. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we, if we had a course or something here, I'd be trying to kill everybody in here, too. So, no, I, I hear you. But, yeah. Um, yeah, today, like, I just, I think, you know, like I said, most of the audience on our end, at least, is familiar with GoTo now. But I know, like, for example, a lot of my clients, you know, who are maybe other practitioners in the area, you know, whether they're, you know, rolfers or PTs or whoever are, are hearing GoTo and they're checking it out a little bit. So I kind of want to talk to them a little bit as well. But also, Chris, I think, you know, Chris probably has a bunch of questions as, you know, Chris has learned about GoTo. But I, th I think we start, like, Gary, just kind of, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in all this and just kind of the origins and then maybe go into the laws of it a little bit, like what GoTo is all about. Mm -hmm. And then let's just kind of roll from there, man. Yeah, so, um, uh, Gilly Bosch, Jose Bosch is uh, Coach Gill. He was he wasn't in. I actually, was sick. I think when you came down, but um, so he kind of was the identifier, right? Like he basically, long story short, found inside ankle bone high, and and what led him to it was is he he blew out like three levels of his back, um, and it, instead of surgery, it it took him down a road of well, what else can I do, and he started looking into different, you know, corrective exercise programs and things like that. And he first, first person he looked at was Petey Goscu was who actually kind of the Goscu method kind of got him out of pain. And it, 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 but it didn't get him out of pain from like, if I want to go be active standpoint. So, you know, when, when, when he went to go play golf again, he would get the sore back, he would have problems and stuff. So he knew it was more, movement orientated and not just posture alone and um 2012 2013 i think is around when the ipad came out and he bought an ipad and he started basically looking at who was healthy and and who wasn't healthy what guys getting hurt because you know it, it's you you he was maybe 40 years old at the time or whatever and he's like I got a bunch of friends that's broken down. I got a bunch of friends that could go run, uh, you know, they try athletes and stuff like that. <laughs> How, why is there a difference? What's the difference between us? And uh, he started studying and looking at movement and stuff like that. Um, when I opened GLS in 2014, we opened the doors. I was doing, you know, the Olympic lift and the power lift and we had all of that stuff. So it was me myself and two other coaches and, Basically, you went through this little circuit on a weekly basis that was power lift and Olympic lift. And then I was doing a lot of linear speed training and coordination stuff like on the ladder and all of that. And, you know, your regular standard box gym. That, that, that's what we was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and Gilly kind of called me out on social media and uh, he was tro trolling my page. Now, I've been knowing him for a long time. And um, he so he. he made a comment something about a little girl that was jumping on the vertimax and uh i was like well if you know so much then why don't you just come on and, and come do it come come show me and he came over here one day and, and sat down and kind of showed me at the time he called it primal wisdom theory and it was so foreign to like any kind of concept that you ever had and i'm like the language behind it was tough because it didn't sound like, you know, bows. It wasn't even bows and corners and inside ankle bone high at the time. Uh, it really didn't have a name. And, and um, I was like, first of all, I'll give you a little space. So I gave him a little about the size of a closet to go in and do some evaluations. And what at the time wasn't what you got. It was more of a, um, you know, him looking at the way that you walked and ran and not just the posture and stuff like that. So um, I gave him a little space and he started working with some of my guys and it, it seemed like it had some value to it. He would, he would help some guys get out of pain. I would put them back out on the turf and then two weeks later, they would start having the hamstring would show back up or something like that. So it wasn't until um, I, I had Jamal Chase since the eighth grade. So it, Jamal got hurt, but he told me a couple of months before he got hurt that he was a high risk. And mm -hmm. that's whenever, you know, I had to scrap all the equipment and stuff like that and mm -hmm. make a decision to, to move forward. with. with so so I mean, you saw the pattern going. of, like, getting those guys back onto the turf, like going through your traditional, you know, type of training, the Olympic lifts and stuff. I mean, they were, you know, they were getting hurt, all, you know, 
Yeah, yeah I, I mean, kind of their, their recode and put them back in personal sports. training and break down. Yeah. Yeah, it was just part of sports, though. You know, that was the mentality that I had. Now, everybody that we run across that we show the program, it's like I'm talking to myself. And, and it's like, you know, well, people are going to get hurt. You can't stop that. And I'm like, well, you, you got to look at this. And, and that's kind of where yeah. I was. So when Jamal got hurt is when I picked up the iPad and I got serious with it. And But, you know, 2015, 20, that was, well, actually it was like 2016. And then we had a guy come in the gym by the name of uh, Joe Este, which ended up getting the name, nickname Go to Joe. And he mm-hmm. was my guinea pig. He didn't have money for combine training or anything like that. I was doing a favor for a friend. And um, Joe came in and ran like a – he was a good athlete, 4 5 40, 32-inch vertical. He was good. And then he, he uh, yeah, tested – Yeah, he's a, he's a specimen. Like, dude, is built. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's put together, but you know, in seventy five days he ran four two eight, four two nine. He had a thirty eight and a half inch vertical. Before us, he had double knee surgery. He had two meniscus, and that all the pain went away and stuff. And we really created this efficiency in an average athlete that put him into maybe an elite athletic type movement pattern. And now he got cut by the uh, Texans, but. He went to one of these weekend tryouts where they bring out 25 guys or something, and Mm -hmm. they signed him on the spot. So you could see that he was noticeably different than everybody else. And uh, he he just, you know, got under the big lights against Green Bay one night, and um, he got picked apart or whatever. Um, They let him play the whole second half, and it, it it was pretty rough. He had a bad game, and they let him go the next day. And... Canada didn't work out, and it's one of them things where, you know, I could get you athletic or give you the opportunity to let your talent shine through, but at some point you got to be able to play football right. too. Yeah, yeah, and, for and, sure. You know, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, like, now, you know, we kind of understand a little bit about how, how you got involved with it. Like, I guess kind of for the people that don't know, like, you know, like somebody like Chris, who, you know, you're aware of go to Chris, like through social media, but like for the general audience, listen, like what is go to all about? Cause you know, you see bows and inside ankle bone high, people are like, what right. the hell? There's so much information. It's so like, what's the underlying theme here? What are we trying to do? Basically we, are, we was able to identify a pattern that is the pattern, right? It's the blueprint for human movement. And, you know, if, if a lot of people would say, well, that, there's no such thing, but we got one cardiovascular system, we got a digestive system, we got all of these systems of the body, and then basically what we feel like is we identify the movement system for the body. Um, you know, demographics, culturally, and things like that, wherever you come from, whatever race, male, female, everybody crawls the same. So kind of when we went back, that's where we looked first, right? We looked at what's the crawl pattern. And then mm-hmm. we looked at the indigenous tribesmen because the indigenous tribesmen is unscathed by Western civilization. So there's a consistency in their patterns and in the crawl pattern. And then when you throw in the super athlete, it's like, wait a minute, this guy that plays in two decades, you know, plays two decades of sports, has the same pattern that the 80 year old indigenous tribesman has you know, that could still go out and run a marathon or feed his family. Like, mm-hmm. there's something unique about that pattern. Then when you go look at the other side of it, the injury side of it, which is really where I started studying first, was the ACL non-contact and the, uh, Achilles non-contact. That's where I kind of w- w- was really – it's completely different. The pattern's completely different. So then we built the system around it, which has your global laws, which is kind of what you was talking about, it, which is like – you have your columns, foot control, head control, like all of these 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 global laws that we was able to identify and present to y'all at the certification. It's 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 all in the assessment, right? So you, mm-hmm. you you learn how to do the assessment based off of these global laws, and then we have protocols and regiments that we built we use to bring you back to that innate blueprint. Yeah, the recode, baby. All right, so yes, I got a it's question. Real. So explain exactly what you mean by inside. Okay, let me make sure I get it right. Inside ankle bone high. What does that mean exactly? Uh, and, and also, what is, how does it, uh, what are the thoughts behind? I just so happen awesome. to have a foot. 
So how and how does that <laughs> yeah. go about, uh, like improving performance, or for that matter, reducing injury risk, or um, uh, reducing pain if, if somebody already has pain, that sort of thing. Right. So basically, the concept of inside ankle bone high, and, and it, it's it's based off of the foot being basically a platform for the body, right? And that foot is a half dome shape. So basically what inside ankle bone high is, is the medial malleolus has to play higher than the outside at all time, than the lateral. Meaning when that foot strikes the ground, it needs to hold still. So, you know, typically in the, in the medical terminology and things like that, um, pronation, supination, um, which they, they use to describe on, on different planes of, of motion or whatever, it kind of was maybe more of a cadaver type explanation. And what we did was is brought it more into a systematic thing where that bone needs to stay higher than the outside through everything, landing, leaving. So you must absorb all of the pressure into what we would call a strong side of the foot, but basically it's the ball of the foot, pressure going in f uh, two through five, and then the heel, no weight into the heel, no load into the heel, which is basically like every single strength program is load the heel. Um, and then the big toe is basically there, and it's, it's, it's awake and it's, it's active, but it's not accepting the load. So it's, it's there for balance purposes and things like that. Now, if you can do that and maintain that, that half dome structure that you see the foot. So if you take the second toe, run a straight line, everything on the inside of the foot is like, there's nothing there. You just fall off of a cliff. If the arch is present, everything two through five is where the meat or the foot is. So we want to load that. And then if, you know, you look at it and some of the things that they see that you would learn in the certification, there's a series of tendons and ligaments and stuff that support the foot in that arch. Once you lose inside ankle bone high, then you, you open yourself up to valgus, um, uh, you, you know, any, any kind of thing. So think about if the foot holds still, you have a foot strike, no pressure into the heel, the, the, the foot lands, and then the talus plugs into the foot, into that platform, and basically could sit there and trace the navicular bone, and, and, and it's got to be in a decompressed state. So then once that could happen, then that talus has the ability to open and swivel, and then that's whenever you talk about setting the bow, and then, you know, after the bow, you would follow, you would come off the ground and, and, and leave in a corner. Uh, the corner is basically just the 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 way that once the bow sets, then that hip, it kind of the greater trochanter kind of just has the ability open and then close, open and close, and that's bow to corner. But it all has to happen on a straight foot with an inside ankle bone high. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm starting to get the picture. If that clears it up a little bit, yeah, the foot helps my skeleton, because yeah. because essentially. You, you got a, you got the hip as a as a ball and socket, and then we've always been taught, um, you know, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, supination, pronation, but there's a, a there's a swivel in there. So in order for that leg to only have a knee in the middle that can hinge without getting damaged, these two have to be in synchrony. So that knee could open and it could hinge, and then it could come off the ground and it could hinge. As the leg goes into what, you know, they would call extension, the, the foot needs to go heel away. And you probably, I don't know how much, uh, Chris, you follow my social media page, but I did this thing a while back called triple extension is fake. And when I tell you all hell broke loose on my social media, I told you page, said triple people thought triple I was extension. crazy. They like, you that's, said triple I, I said triple, triple extension is fake, is right? Fake. Right. Yeah, and, and the reason why I said it is, is because what is it? Like, what I know it's ankle, knee, and, and, and hip go into extension, but does the, does the heel go, go away? Does it go in? It wasn't a completion. It was like they gave you part of the puzzle, but they didn't finish it. Because the healthy athlete, his heel goes away from the body. The unhealthy athlete, his heel goes in. And that's the difference between moving in what we would call forward gear as opposed to re reverse. 
Mm -hmm. Now, like you brought up the, you know, the supination thing. And honestly, that's i uh, I'm glad you, you brought that up. Chris and I were talking about that a little bit last night, but that's a question that I've been asked, you know, a few times. And so what do you have to say to somebody, you know, when they ask about the natural, you know, supination or pronation in the gait cycle, like how does inside ankle bone high play a role in this, you know, or, or does well, it? Well, those, t listen, you probably never, ever, ever going to find an athlete or a human being that doesn't supinate, right? Or, or does, I mean, doesn't pronate. There, there isn't a collapse there. But the, the, the guy that comes in that's injured, that has that in his gait, when we get a more inside ankle bone high, they become healthier. They become more explosive. They get faster. They more they more agile. So we know that it brings out the, the athleticism. Now, will they ever be inside? You know, go to ten. I mean, you had a few people at one time because we have so many things that could pull us away from it. And it's not just in the training industry, but it's in everyday society. Cars are non-negotiable. If you could take a car, you're gonna take a car. You're not gonna walk everywhere as you go. Um, sitting. Chairs. I'm sitting in a chair right now. All of us are. It's non-negotiable. It's going to happen. Um, so there's a lot of things that are present in Western civilization that remove that, whereas that indigenous tribesmen in the baby aren't exposed to. Because I, I don't know if, if y'all have kids or not, but like I have five. So like, it, it, I, and I got a five and a six. I mean, a, what a six, five and six right now. And w w they are crazy. Like, they out of control. They all over the place. They don't want to sit down. But the thing is, is what do we do? We sit them in a chair in school. Mm -hmm. We give them the iPad. So you start to kind of start seeing that pattern slowly taken away. And by the time the kid's 10 years old, you know, it's it's the back chain dominance is gone. Inside ankle bone, low is present. Duck feet, hips are pushed forward. They, they become a mess. And then... You know, all you got to do is go follow um, the Little League World Series and and these kids are, you know, shoulders are pre -call. It's a mess. They're, oh, they yeah, look like They look mess, like they, they, yeah, they look like they're 70 years old, some of them. Yeah, because, the I mean, go. like our lifestyle is just basically de-evolving, you know, these kids, like from, I mean, from the beginning. I mean, everything from putting, you know, the little, you know, baby shoes on them to keeping them in the little bouncer or whatever and just keeping them away from doing what it is that they're naturally born to do. You know, and I mean, they just they de evolve, you know, yeah, and yeah, that that the the bouncing thing. I, I tell everybody now that I know better, um, because I, I had my kids through the process as we was building this, my, my two babies, and um, having them in the house every day studying. Like, there's a video of my little boy from like an aerial view crawling, and it's all over the place on social media. Like I've seen it. I seen some guy the other day posted and I didn't even know who he was. And he was showing like, you know, the way the spine moves in the baby and the way the spine moves in the athlete, like coming out of the blocks and track is basically a crawl pattern. Just, you know, you got levels of support. So we would say that when the baby's on the ground crawling, he has six points of support. As he starts to develop, it turns into two, right? Like he don't have to use his hands. He don't need to use the wall right. to hold himself up no more. And then through that process, if you put something in there to interrupt that, like a bouncy thing that would turn the feet out a little bit more, or, you know, I, I, my wife had bought my kid a bike for Christmas with no pedals when he was like four years old. And the first time I saw him ride it, I threw it in the trash. She's <laughs> like, I just bought it for Christmas. I'm like, I'm sorry. He's not going to ride that. <laughs> like go buy, go find something else for him to play with, because yeah. it just put him like this to push. So, uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> so you know, I think the other side. All right, all right, so we're getting into you know, kind of talking about how the body moves, and you know, it's not just training. Um, you know, it, it's it's lifestyle factors, and so yeah, we have to recode. You know all that and, and for people who are listening and don't understand what the recode is i mean that's that's where after we do the, you know the evaluation you know we're, we give you the tools from the ground up to to get your body back in that back chain dominance and to get everything you know moving the right way setting the bow the corners all that good stuff but mm -hmm. you know how do you how do you offset you know daily daily life i mean if you have an 
Like, how common is it to have these high school or college kids come to you that, you know, have all these things that, you know, you and I see in an assessment, but their coaches are insistent on, you know, power cleans and front squats, and they're still trying to argue whether or not front squats or back squats are better. And it's like, man, that, that, that shit doesn't even matter. Like, right. you know, it's so far behind. Like, how do you personally like to offset that? Like, because I know we've had a few kids ask that, like, well, how often do I need to be doing things to, you know, make this recode change? Yeah. It basically, it's, it becomes a rep game, right? Like, all of the, the, the nervous system's going to be responsive to inputs. If it gets good inputs, you're going to probably not have pain and stuff like that. That's why you'll get a client that's a super water. You start giving them some good input, and then they start to feel better quick. Like, you might have guys get out of pain in two or three days, maybe even feel a big difference after a session. And when you tell people that, they think it's crazy. But um, the... the the answer is, number one, I try to tell all my kids, don't go be a hero in the weight room. Don't go in there and try to have your name at the top of the list or get the T-shirt because you're in the 600-pound squat club and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, don't try to be that guy. Oh, then I'm guilty you, of pushing that years ago. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah me I'll too. Like, I did it. Like, we, like if you didn't leave here throwing up and, and, and basically crawling out of the gym, then I didn't do my job was the mentality that I had. Um, and that's probably why 20% of my guys was having soft tissue injuries and things like that. Um, but, you, you know, we educate the athlete. So you're going to give them the knowledge, understanding, sitting in Sasia, Sasia, Sasia to do your homework, um, not sitting in a chair all day. Uh, when you get back from practice, they have the go to app, which all the coaches have that, um, you, you know, one of the resources we give the coaches to where that athlete has that app on their phone it could have a, a regiment that's specific to their needs inside of it so that when they get home at night hey man hit you three rounds of this groundwork keep the body in the decompressed state go sit on the floor sit you know sit crisscross applesauce and watch tv instead of you know in the recliner like i do every night and and it's so it's <laughs> it's like we all guilty of it right oh but yeah get, giving that athlete the knowledge and giving them the understanding and now it becomes their choice go do what the coach says never be disrespectful you don't have to be a superhero in the weight room yeah, but absolutely. make sure that you offsetting those lifts with this groundwork and things like that and what's happening is is because in the beginning, we took the approach like to hell with all of that stuff. And and it didn't get us nowhere. Like it got us nowhere in the training industry. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, hey, man, if you're going to do these things, it, then you need to have some kind of regiment to help you. And what's happened is now we're starting to get the Mark Bells and, you know, Chris Bells, the power lifters and all. And I've done spent a lot of time out there with them. And he's got some of the power lifters and all now. Like the world's strongest man does a little groundwork regimen before all his lifts and after. And what it's done is gave him the ability to even lift more if yeah, he wanted yeah. to. You oh, know? yeah, no, I mean, I've got kids whose numbers at school are exploding. Yeah. You know, and they're like, what, what's going on? Well, it's like, man, we're putting your body in a position where it's working for you, not against you. Like, we're getting back to the laws of nature because nature is going to win, you know, yeah. and putting you back to what you can do. And you're seeing. You know, the, yeah, you know, you're moving efficiently. And so even when you're, you know, squatting, for example, like, yeah, you're going to be able to recruit more because the body's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and, I, and I'm kind of bouncing around, but like that, you know, people may say I'm not a good interviewer, but it's not an interview. I think it's like a conversation. And it's like, yeah, that's what it, it's, it's Chris and Mandy know, know me. And, you know, Gary, you know me like. I'm ADD as I get. I'm all over the board. And so, like, I kind of want, want to veer back into, like, the, okay, we went inside ankle bone high, but, like, let's go into a little bit more of the structure and, you know, the 22-5, the okay? 22-5 in yeah. the bow, you know? And so, you know, for people who don't know, the 22-5, you know, is a big part of go that has to do with the bow and the knee and gear. I mean, sh shed some light on that for people. So, so basically what the 22.5 is is from the midline, there is a, if you look at the chest and both kneecaps, they, everything works off of a 45. So 22.5 is just from the midline is about, it would be perfection, right? Like you want the chest, the bow's going to set up, the knees, the kneecap would set out 22.5 degrees from the midline. And then the chest would follow back legs in the same position too. So mm -hmm. then that 
that you just rotate all the way over to the other side, 45 degrees. But from the midline, that is the 22.5. So basically, you know, everything, you know, it's like everybody wants a number for everything. So it's like here, just do it. Here's 22.5. If you can hit that perfectly every time and symmetrical on each side, then you're not going to have any problems in the, um, you know, in, in training. But you got to be straight foot inside ankle bone high. Oh, it ain't a bow. And that's a right. big confusion that a lot of people have is, is I get videos all the time. People's like, man, look at this bow he's setting. I'm like, he's duck footed. It's not. That foot has to yep. strike. In order for that foot to strike and land straight, that tailor's has to be able to open. That has to be able to swivel open, which allows the knee. I mean, you get three degrees out of that area, 22.5 is easy because it gets bigger as you go up. You right, know? so you guys hear Gary talking. If those of you listening and wondering why I'm not telling you you have a good bow, it's good your freaking foot ain't doing what it's supposed to do, so it's not yeah. a bow. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, essentially, if you can't sit and say it, so one of the things that we're doing right now, and you'll start to see it showing up, is, is we've created a tips and reminders, and we've created, like, we we starting to dig into the education more and put more um, like I guess notes out there where on your on the coaches uh, website now that we have to go to institute um, there'll be things in there like talking about the straight foot and then we're gonna create Ricky's got this system of like landmarks almost or or these these if if you can't sit in Caesar then you shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z until you can sit in Caesar. And that's one of the biggest problems with Gota is, is everybody wants straight, jumps straight into the landmine press. You know what I'm saying? Like go yeah, into the sexy. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it looks cool. Go into the, you know, start running cone drills and doing all of this stuff. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't, you can't even sit in Caesar, dude. You can't yeah. hold a wall sit for 40 seconds. Like, like there's a beginning and then you work your way up to that certain point. So, you know, trying to dial that in and getting better in our explanation of where you should be at at a certain point lined up with the exercises is what we're trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. So we brought the 22.5 and the knee and like, okay, that's that's perfection. And then you made a comment and, you know, I, I, I just know like before I got involved in GOTA, you know, one of my questions was always, okay, well, is it like this with everybody and i feel like there's a yes and no answer to that but once i started studying and learning came down and worked with you guys I, i've also learned that there are subtle variables and, and just variances in in movement patterns with people so like if you are you know a baseball player and you know how how the bow and the corner inside ankle bone high apply in the swing versus that of a track runner and like i feel like i know that's something i'd like to kind of clarify with folks is that the same laws apply but it's almost a level of okay it's it's close enough to a degree you know mm -hmm. what i mean does that make sense mm -hmm. gary like yeah yeah well well this is this is i i could take a um let's take a baseball player let's <clears throat> let's take one one athlete right that plays baseball let's say he's a he's a shortstop and he's a defensive back i could take that kid and he says a woda or whatever, but he's a really good woda, right? He's a really good athlete. And he comes in, because this has nothing to do with talent. This is purely to do with health and movement efficiency and things like that. It can make you better. Um, it's never going to make you worse. It's going to free up your innate talents and all of that stuff, your, your genetic talents, whatever. Um, if I take these, this kid that plays both them positions, right? He's a shortstop and... I could take him and do six months of training with him, and his hitting coach is going to come to me and tell me that his swing is way better, and his defensive back coach is going to tell me that his hips are way better. Yep. Because when you do the eval and I see inside ankle bone low with no bow, that shit is coming out in their swing. If yes. they front chain dominant, it's coming out in the swing. It's coming out in the defensive back play. Because one thing that all of the hitting coaches want to do is they trying to keep everything into the back chain and access the glute and the hamstring because it's the most powerful muscles on the body. And they can't because the movement behavior is front chain. When the kid travels through space, He's anterior chain dominant. He can stand up and have his butt back all he wants. But if he starts to take a step and them hips come forward, 
without staying back, that is going to manifest itself in their game. So the behavioral side of Goda is it, it is the, it is Goda. The behavior yes. is Goda. You know, you got to have uh, a bow as a behavior. It's that ankle, the hip with a straight foot open and set, and then a knee can sit in there and bend. So if, if we're to take that, so, if we're to take this into the practical, I mean, as far as what someone's observing, they would be, let's say, inside ankle bone low, that foot's staying flat as they, you know, when they, a healthy position inside ankle bone high, they would be pivoting, whereas inside ankle bone low, they would be kind of twisting, and their foot would be staying flat. Am I correct? Well, let me let me just try to um, give you this v visual again. If I strike the foot and then I'm going, this this guy's going forward, right? And he loads inside ankle bone high. The foot's going to strike, and then none of this is going to happen. And then the heel's going to move away. Right. So, so inside ankle bone would high, be, it would be high in the landing and stay high through the leaving, and then reset and then come back down. Inside ankle bone low, this same guy's trying to go forward as his ankles collapsing down and in. So now you're putting the knee at risk. The whole, all the muscles have a, have a way that they supposed to behave and you start to change that pattern. Now, if you take the Olympic lift and you, and you, you, you show the foot doing a clean or something, this happens every rep. So now you're giving the nervous system that at max neuro drive, this isn't happening. This is happening. So that's how people become water, and it intensifies when they get into the weight room and things like that. Yeah, you know who you would, uh, you know yeah. who he would really like, John, is uh, George Benet. Um, they basically yeah. are, are yeah, they're basically I, teaching so. the same thing. They're using different terminology, mm -hmm. but they're teaching the exact same thing on the rotational movements, on the setup, uh, on the. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the exact same thing. It's. You know, I just like I said, I had to put it in a picture in my own head. Uh, you know, so that, like I said, using different terminology, I had to, I had to, you know, basically uh, take what you were saying and try to put it into a practical example in my own mind. Visualize right, it. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah. that's what that's what GoTo is. GoTo is an observation based program, so it's not it's not based off of force play production or anything like that because you everything that they're using right now. To, to, to in rehab and things like that to measure like um and see if they're getting stronger or more efficient it has no foundation it has no um it has no blueprint so whatever makes that that force plate reading go up that's what we're doing so in most cases and 99 percent i'd say 99 percent of them is when they u using some kind of reading or output reading like that um they're basically creating more water because they're taking the pattern that this guy's got because he's already hurt and they yep. trying to it's like the odell thing i just had a, a picture a video of him sent to me the other day squatting and he's all on one side the ankle and the knees collapsing in on the right side and he just had two left knee acl repairs in the last three years or whatever so when when you see that now the compensation pattern's built and he's in there squatting with the best in the world Right, yeah. these guys are supposed to be the best in the world. Reinforcing he looks the same hard. movement pattern. Yeah, you're yeah. reinforcing the same one of movement patterns. So, like, no strength is not going to overpower that. You know, and, and no. I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's something I have to keep reinforcing with with people is, you know, like you're getting stronger in that squat is not going to impact in a positive manner your movement. I don't care how much you squat. It doesn't work that way, and, and you've got to be able to move efficiently. And, and Gary, I've gone on record. I think I, I may have even told you that, that, but like I'm a firm believer that I think this movement, and this is what that's what I believe Goda is. Like this is a movement, and like mm -hmm. dude, I, I'm on a mission now. And it's like I firmly believe in 10, 15 years, there's a good chance that we're weightlifting in its thought process right now probably won't even be as prevalent as it is right now because people are understanding the value of look you want to be a better athlete you got to move the right way you want to be a better golfer you know a better baseball player. you got to move the right way your strength doesn't necessarily influence that and a lot of times it'll actually make it worse mm -hmm. um, you know because you're reinforcing poor movement patterns if you got them you know which yeah. obviously most people do most people are gonna be front chain dominant moving like a woda um, but like with that so what what is your thought on how weight training or i guess just 
do you still feel like there's a benefit to you know certain athletes like let's say an offensive lineman right who's going to be absorbing you know you know, 250 plus pounds every play do you still feel like there's benefit in having that particular athlete to joint receptors feel that type of load you know does that, does that make sense um like in the weight yeah, room yeah i mean the the thing is is let's let's just look at it like this for what weightlifting is is it's all built around a one rep max and it's typically like uh four six eight ten and twelve reps right where a football game is 60 minutes. So the way that we build in strength inside of these guys is, is we may do like, you know, everything's still failure. So it's time under tension, right? We develop in strength yep. that way. Um, you, you, the way that you eat can dictate a lot of the way that you gain weight and take weight off and things like that. If you get a kid that's, you know, 16 years old, he's, he's 6'3", and he's 225 pound offensive lineman. And the first thing that everybody's gonna tell him is, is man, listen, you get the 325, it's gonna be great. So the first thing he does is he goes and starts pounding away on the weights and he starts pounding away on the food and protein shakes as you drink and things like I, that. That's <laughs> water, bro. That's water. Yeah, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> it just came up right whenever I said it. But um, yeah, um, it was like you planned it. But the nutrition <laughs> side of it is going to be big on a weight gain. But what's going to happen to that kid is because he's going to immerse himself into the weight room, he's going to take on the shape of the lip. So if he's in there wide base squatting and the, and the knees are collapsing, that becomes his movement behavior. Whereas we – and then he ends up like – I mean, they all wear knee braces for one. Not just yeah. – the only reason ain't because they in the trenches. There's a oh. reason that uh, they, they all hurt. Like they're hurting, you know. You look at the sixty-year-old offensive lineman now. The guy that's sixty years old that played O line in the league, he has knee replacements and stuff. Yep. It was almost like, hey man, that's just part of the process. But getting them to, to you know, you can intensify these lifts. You can put a thousand pounds on a sled and pull it as long as you can pull it. Go to you can push it as long. You can hemi press as much weight as you want. So there's ways to do it that don't necessarily take throwing a bar on the back what we believe is happening or should happen and i think it is happening to an extent is if you want a power lift go be a power lifter if you want yes. an olympic lift then it's a sport you olympic it's a, lift. If yes, you a crossfitter, sport. yes yeah it's if you if it's a if you a crossfitter and you have to do these things then cool however there needs to be a thing that if you do CrossFit, you're highly likely going to have an injury. Not too many CrossFit people have no injuries. I know that there's – and I'm not saying don't do it if that's what Breaking you love. Breaking news. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm saying be under the mindset that, hey, there, there most likely will be some type of injury along the way. Dude, the CrossFit thing is genius in the sense that you're competing against yourself. So when you take somebody that non-athletic, maybe was a nerd, and I'm not saying they all law because they got some badass dudes. I don't want to get my ass kicked. Yeah, but yeah, I'll say someone can take yeah. me down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I'm, well, eventually somebody's gonna walk through these doors and beat the shit out of me. I know it's coming. <laughs> like I just, I'm ready for it. I told my wife I'm gonna come on beat up one day. It just is what it is. But um, hopefully I can save their knee after because you know how you become <laughs> friends after. Like, yeah. but anyway, um. <laughs> No, that it's it's like the concept of certain, some of these things are, hey man, I know I'm gonna be in pain, I know I'm gonna get hurt, but the 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 feeling that I'm gonna get or what it's gonna give me internally may be not worth the you know they may and now when they sixty they may say I wish I wouldn't have done that but you know it's where we at. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I know I know where my timer's going off here, um, so I know we're, we're gonna have to. In this in a second, um, I don't know, Chris. I mean, like, Chris, you're you're kind of the general audience in, yeah. in this one, like to a degree. Like, well, I had to get a. Does that help clarify? It, some it does. And again, I mean, I'm having to put just like I said a minute ago. I had to come up with my own picture. Well, the picture I had was of a particular exercise that we do using a, you know, you mentioned a landmine and a uh, a hammer, what we call a hammer, and. Uh, and kind of that was the picture I had in my head of that inside ankle bone high. I, I, again, I you know I have to have a, a 
frame of reference. So that's what gave yeah. me the frame of reference. So, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and you talk about that picture, and I think that's that's another important thought we should we could probably end on is, you know, Gary, you and I were talking about this. I think me and Ricky were talking about it down there. But, like, go to the source. Like, you see, like, this social media trend of people trying to, like, go-to-fy everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you when you don't really understand the details of what's actually going on in there, a you'll develop bad you know bad habits. But it's not you know it's not exactly what what go to truly is. You know, like we talked right. about the bow. Like you <clears throat> gotta have the right foot placement inside angle on high to actually be having a bow. You know, so like for those of you, you know, who see go to stuff on social media and bring it you know to us, like. Go look to the source, you know, go look to, yeah. you know, to Gary's page, look at our page, you know, Ricky's page, like, you know, um, yeah, you know, I mean, you got the right way. And one thing, John, and you know, from being in there is, you know, just for your audience or whatever, if you are looking for a coach and I'm, I'm hoping that most of the people that your audience do come to you, but if they may not be here or they somewhere else or whatever, or it might be a kid that's off at college somewhere else, a couple of things. If you dealing with a go to coach, they need to have to go to app. So you know because you know especially when you're learning in the beginning, like these exercises, they need to hear them cues constantly, right? Yeah. So them having that app and being able to, so if they got to have to go to app, that coach should be in the institute. And then if that coach sends you away with some type of performance type thing, that coach should be giving you Rico two two five, which. The coach, it's important for the coaches to push it too because y'all make money off of that stuff. So there's there's the way that we've set the business model up now, is since me and Ricky had taken over, is is that the coach has all the resources and the opportunity to have some kind of financial gain inside of the the knowledge to know that they send in their athlete away with the proper tools and the resources for the athlete to have to stay go to or keep moving themselves toward it because you know one thing john and i'm not just saying it because i'm on your show but because i've been dealing with luke is is you have a genuine genuine care and concern for your athletes like there's above and beyond right whereas a lot of these guys they, they just, man, it, they more like trying to attach themselves to the athlete and put their name out there. And, and you know, I was looking at one of the uh, trainers today, and I'm not going to get into names and stuff like that, but it was a field work guy and stuff. And he's got, like, everybody he deals with has done been on the injury report already, and we halfway through the season. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. like all of this, this footwork stuff and doing all of this, and he's got his own system, and there's no homage to what nature created. And like you said earlier in the show, nature's always going to win. So yep. you can either – listen, uh, the, the parents in this area, they, they tell the other parents, you got to go see Gary. And you got to see me. If you don't come and see me at some point, you don't have a high school pro and college career. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to come here and get this education. And then at that point, now you make up if, if you want to go train and, and get fire emojis – or if you want to go train and stay safe all the time, because yep. this ain't the fire emoji spot. It's it's right. not that. It's it's the we're gonna take care of your body. We're gonna give you the necessities and all of that other shiny shit. It's like they all that glitters ain't gold. It's not good for you, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. No, man. I, I mean, we're we're on the same page, and I, you know, we have a lot of coaches that listen to the show too. And you know, I I encourage you to really dig into to go to. I mean, you know, it's. It's made a tremendous impact in our, you know, at ELP, and like we haven't, we just, we've just gotten started. Like, yeah. this is, we're, this is gonna, we're just, this is just the beginning. So, I definitely encourage coaches to check it out. Um, hey, Gary, where, uh, where can people uh, reach you? What are your social media handles and website? Where can they find you? Go to movement.com is the website. Um, the Do It Yourself website is the Rico Two Two Five. But like I said, anybody should be going through you for that. Um, uh, the GLS underscore training is Instagram. And then uh, Ricky's got a lot of content on his too. It's red pill Rick on, on uh, Instagram. Which is the best Instagram handle ever. I love <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it kind of just fits him. Like, listen, we joke around all the time. Like, 504-223-4355 is the number. And it's been on every shirt we've made except for the last batch that you probably uh -huh. bought some of. But, um... We, it's a guarantee that if you call that number, you're going to get red pilled. 
Like, if you didn't believe in Goda before, I tell people all the time. People start to say stuff on social media. I'm like, hey, man, here's my phone number, the address. If you're in the area, come in here. When you walk out, when you get off the phone with us, you're going to feel differently about what you just commented on. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool. Well, Gary, man, I appreciate you, appreciate you coming on and joining us. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do this again. And, uh, you know, the final thing is, you know, guys, Gary gave you all his info. And, and remember, like we tell everybody, this, we, we don't charge for any of this. We don't we don't get you know anything from this. Like we're not making money off this. Our, our whole mission is to just get the information out there to help improve our community. Like that's what we're passionate about. And so there is a fee for the show, guys. You can either send me and Gary, you know, you can Venmo us, you know, 100 bucks a piece. Or you can just share the show, like just bring us somebody to the show, right? You know, whether it's another coach, whether it's a family member, just bring somebody to the show so they can learn about Gary, so they can learn about other guests we bring on and just and grow and evolve because that's what it's all about. So we can improve our communities. Um, and that's the name of the game. We just want to see the kids win. So um, share the show, guys. Um, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Gary, thanks so much for coming on, man. We're going to do yeah, this again you. pretty Thank soon you so much. for sure. A lot of good information. Yeah, appreciate, yeah, appreciate yeah. y'all. So we're going to do it again. All right. Well, that's the show, guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in, and we will talk to you guys soon.